Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger! Let's go visit Specchio, now that well, we don't have Chrono around anymore. A marlin is a kind of fish, right? Like the Florida marlins? Yeah, he probably could, but uh, not today, not today. We don't need to teach you any new things, so... Okay, so, we got a, we got the Chrono Trigger last time, so let's put it to use. Or, well, let's figure out how to put it to use first. It just kind of strikes me odd that they switch... strikes me a little odd that they switch the map screen from the bottom to the top when you're selecting what time period you want to go to. So, if you remember what Gaspar was telling us, we gotta take it to the person who built the Wings of Time. So, that means Balthazar, right over here. I like how the sound effect for that door just went by real fast, like, you know, yeah, 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 we, you've opened the door before, we know, we know. Why? I'll just take your word for it, though. Huh? How detailed does it need to be? Don't answer that, viewers. Hmm, Norstein Beckler. Win Norstein's money? No. No, that's another game. But, yeah, uh, so now we gotta go back to the Millennial Fair with Norstein Beckler. Or Norstein, whatever. And, well, get a double dial of Chrono. That's what you get from the 40-point game. I decided not to do it at the time, so that way, well, we can get a little extra dialogue now. Apparently no one notices the floating fortress of death around. Actually, they do. But they just act like it's just a normal, everyday thing. If you just talk to them, they're like, Oh yeah, that floating fortress of doom? Yeah, pay no attention to it. It's probably nothing. It looks great in the sun. But now we have more kitties since last time I was here. We got a black kitty too, like Lenny. No, Lenny, no, no, down. Lenny, Lenny, down. Naughty kitty. Okay, so, we gotta go over here. Fortunately, actually, for this storyline event, you don't need 40 silver points in order to progress with the plot. You just talk to him, and, well, stuff happens. So, yeah, we don't even need the 40 silver points. So if we lose, well, we'll have to pay some money, but that's okay. So, uh, sure, why not? I'm sure Marley would be happy to pay real money for a lifelike sex doll. But anyway, yeah, it's basically just mimic whatever he does, and we're in pretty good shape. So, left, right, laugh, surprise, that's pretty much it. This is my third attempt at trying to do this. Which is surprising, because I don't think this game's really remotely that hard. But I guess I was just tired or out of practice or something. I may consider showing off getting all of the Dapple Dolls, not just Chronos, or maybe the Poyozo Dolls, or whatever like that. So I'll think about that. Maybe do that as a bonus episode or something. But anyway, all right, we got it. So yeah, if you didn't make it all the way through the game, well, you'd have to pay some amount of money, but... Well, I did. So, all right. Uh, yeah, never mind the time machine right next to your house. Oh, hey, we've got a floating fortress there. Hey, a time machine, probably not that far-fetched either. Yeah, we took care of Chrono. We took care of him real good. Better than great. Better than bad. It's good. I can't get my voice that high today. This is kind of embarrassing, but can I borrow the doll that's an exact replica of your son? Sounds creepy. Yeah, go right ahead. Luca's been borrowing it all these years. No. No, just kidding. We don't... Uh, what are you going to do with the, the doll, Marley? Don't answer that, viewers. Well, 
Okay, so now we got the down. Let's head on back to 2300 then and see what Balthazar wants us to do with that. Oh, you know, there is one more thing I could show you guys. I'm thinking if I want to do that now. Yeah, why not? Let's do it now. If you go to the Black Omen in 2300 AD, well, you get a little dialogue here with Queen Zeal. Okay, so why are you so happy? You have no one to rule over. Uh, okay. Alright, well, anyway, yeah, yeah. You come here in 2300 AD, and, well, she obviously knows she's already won. So, there's really not a whole lot you can do here. I just figured, well, I might as well show it off, get a little extra dialogue here. But yeah, if you want to do something in the Black Omen, you gotta come here, well, before the Day of Lavos, because if you try to get in, yeah, the door is locked, so you can't do anything in this time period. You can get into the Black Omen in uh, 12,600 and 1,008, or 12,000 BC and 600 AD or 1000 AD. I'll talk more about that when I get to that later, but not right now. For now, let's just go all the way through here. Let's see now, I want to bring Megas back to the lead there. I had Marley in the lead, mostly because uh, she was easier for me to see the change in her uh, what is it? When she was doing that mimicking game, because Magus's expressions—that's the word, expressions. I could see, I could see the changes in Marley's expressions easier. Because if I tried using Magus, well, he doesn't really have many expressions. It doesn't—it's hard to tell. So, but anyway, apparently he's going to be sending these dolls up to Death Peak to help us out. They even got Poyos of Dolls in this time period, too. Three. Three Dolls! Ah, ah, ah! Thanks for the help. Sure, why not? It's kind of a bad place to put a self-destruct button, but right in your belly button? Mm. I like how they have that line, time no longer flows for him. Or even the Super Nintendo version had a similar line. Normally I wouldn't like them censoring, yeah, he's freaking dead, but in this case that almost seems, well, fitting for this kind of a game. Sorry I went through that a little quickly there, but uh, I had to because you talk to the Dow, basically what it says is you gotta get behind these trees so that way the wind doesn't blow you off the mountain. Uh-oh. Uh, nuts. Yeah, so basically, get in front of the trees. Once you get there, let go of the dash button. Then just wait there. Then keep on going. If you hold down the dash button by the tree, chances are you're probably going to run to the left or the right unless you're like dead center on it, which is really hard to do. So I just prefer to let go of the dash button and that way I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we got some new enemies here, which is why I've got the uh, Demon Slayer on Frog because well, he deals double damage to these guys. All right. That makes life a little easier. The nice thing about Magus is that, well, yeah, he's a magic user. He starts with Lightning 2, Ice 2, and Fire 2, but he also has a pretty decent physical attack. So between Magus and Marley, they can pretty much kill just about anything, any random enemy you run into around here. So, yeah, we really don't need to use much in the way of spells here. Not that there's that many new enemies here to begin with, but you take what you can get. Okay, so we got another enemy up there. Check it out. Hmm. 
I was thinking about having Marley joining in on the fun, but... Well, they already killed two enemies, so... Wait for Magus to attack. And then have... Oh, okay, the other way around, but... You know what I mean. Marley basically finished the guy off. Magus was, well, he just doesn't quite have that oomph. Now, our destination is above there, but first we want to grab some treasure. Okay, took care of those two guys. Now, before going into that cave there, I want to make some special preparations here. Uh, first things first, let's heal up a little bit there. And let's see. First things first, I want to bring in Robo instead of Frog there. And I also want to remove the Berserker Ring from Magus there. And just equip him with anything. Doesn't really matter. Not that I'm going to be having him do much anyway. For boss time against the Lava Spawn. Okay, so first things first. You see, we got two parts to the Lava Spawn. The head, or the mouth, whatever you want to call it. And the shell. If you hit the shell, well, it's not going to end well for you. So you basically want to use your most powerful single targeting text on the mouth itself. Make sure that whatever single text you use won't accidentally hit the shell. Like, well, there's some text that might accidentally do that. Like, say, uh, cube, or not cube toss, uh, well, whatever they call it in this version of the game, I forget. But yeah, like, some texts you might think they only target one person, but they don't, like Ice Sword 2. Oh, but we don't have Chrono. Too soon, viewers? Hey, hey, alright. And there we get the Gigaton Arm, so let's give that to Robo there. Yeah, part of the reason why I'm using Marley and Frog for the most part in this area is because they give really good experience. Hey, Robo's doing pretty good on well, text, too. Yeah, the enemies here get pretty good experience, or rather, tech points, and Marley and Frog are perhaps my two least favorite characters. So, since there's really no advantage to using one character or the other here, I figured let's use the characters who need the tech points the most. There's some enemies there, but I figured uh, I'll just skip them because they're the same enemies we've already seen before. There we get the Brave Sword that I could give to Frog, but since some enemies are weak to the Demon Slayer, I prefer to stick with that for now. Why those guys are considered mage-type enemies, I don't know. You got me on that one, viewers. If you go up here, haha, you open a cave. So now, I'll meet you back on the other side. There's a save point down below if you want to use that, but well, I don't think that's necessary. And that chest, we get the Hadean Sickle. Want to give that to Magus there? Awesome. And let's go up here. Whoa! I almost forgot that one was there. Yeah, the Harbinger of Death to my world. I just forgot he was around the corner. But anyway, so what you want to do here is don't use the dash button unless you want to move up here. And then... Get over here, and we made it to the other side. If you fall down, you'll get sent back to the bottom. You gotta start all over again. So, fortunately, I avoided that. Alright, took care of... Oh, I thought I took care of all those guys. Well, I guess not. Whatever. Hey, how's it going? Push the shell. Climb the shell. Be the shell. Well, there's another save point there, if you so choose to use it. There we get a dark helm. Okay, so there's another lava spawn here, and once you kill this one, for some reason, his shell remains. Like, remember what the dial was telling you? You push the shell, you climb the shell, you can get up here. There we get a mem memory cap. Oh, I almost forgot. The dark helm. I want to equip that on Megus. Huge deal, but well, it's there. So, all right, we made it to the peak of Death Peak. Will the Chrono Trigger work? Well, let's find out right now. Nah, I'm not going to cliffhang you viewers like that. Not today. I'm in a good mood today. And besides, there's things I want to do after this. Off screen.
well, those of those who are left, I would think most people who are left on Earth fear the darkness. Why does Robo have the pendant? Not whatever works. Nuts. Wonder why we had to come all the way here to use the Chrono Trigger. Now, from what some people have told me, they say that Death Peak essentially is Lavos. Like, once he spawned from the center of the Earth or whatever, and blew up the world or whatever, then they... And then Lavos basically spent all the energy he had been saving up for a while, and then promptly died. Then he creates these Lavos spawn, and they do whatever they're going to do. But Lavos is... Even if Death Peak is Lavos now, or what's left of him, why would that have anything to do with using the Chrono Trigger? I mean, why do we... I mean, I suppose you gotta make the player do something, go through a dungeon or whatever, but... I don't know. It just seems kind of silly. And apparently not. Okay, well, anyway, let's just change out the dial for the real thing. Marley likes the real thing. get out of here anyway. I wish they kind of made use of this mechanic more often, but they didn't. We just kind of use it for this one thing, and well, that's it. Hey, Christmas lights! Why they have Christmas lights in the future, I don't know. I guess I gotta find a way to be thankful for something in life. are fireworks outside and not gunshots. I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone. Heard something going on out there. Hey, okay, how's it going? One minute I saw, I thought I was going to get the living daylights blasted out of me and, well, now I'm in a tree glowing with daylights. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, don't ever try to save the world again. What did you think was going to happen when you were trying to take on a giant turtle of death that could shoot lava out of its back at you? What did you think was going to happen? I'm not even going to try and fill in the blanks there, viewers. You can do it yourselves. No, I don't want to read your fan fiction. All right, we got Chrono back. But what do we do first? Save the world? Side quests? Or side side quests? Find out next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.